Hey everyone and happy new year. Hope that your 2021 is starting off fantastic. Thanks for joining us this past week for our brand new sermon series, The Excellence of Grace. We're going to be talking about grace for all of uh, January. And it's something that we have talked about in a couple of different sermon series that I've done in the last year, but not anything that we've talked about in a, in a consistent way where we've kind of just talked about grace. And I'm hoping that this year, as we start off with these five sermons on grace, that it'll be an encouragement to you and that it'll remind you of God's goodness and his mercy towards us and that, that we can rest in, completely rest in and find our confidence and our hope and our joy in the grace of God. In fact, this past week's sermon, what was it? It was called The Grace of God. And here was our theology this past week. It is in God's character to be full of grace. It is in God's character to be full of grace. There are some people who maybe are not very gracious people. Uh, God is not one of these characters, not one of these people who grace isn't part of him. I had, an, I had a conversation recently with a friend of mine and uh, she pointed out, interestingly enough, I mean, it's true. We have a lot of people who feel this way. She said that she has just started to fall in love with the Old Testament. And she said that part of the reason she felt like it took her so long is because growing up and being in church or different things, she had heard that the God of the Old Testament was a mean, angry God, and the God of the New Testament was full of love and grace. And so in her mind, there was a division between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. And I, and I think that there are still probably a lot of people who feel that way, who feel some of that tension. There are churches who call themselves the New Testament church, or there are churches that focus on the red letters, you know, just of Christ. And, and they say, you know, we serve the God of the New Testament. We don't serve the God of the Old Testament. Well, one of the things that I hope that I was able to make clear this past Sunday is that the God of the Old Testament, same God that we serve in the New Testament, that he has in his character to be gracious and he has in his character to extend grace to people. One of the points that I made Sunday was even in the midst of him preparing to discipline the Israelites, he would say to them, look, I'm giving you another chance. I'll give you another chance. I'll give you one more chance. And even when he was going to send them into captivity in Babylon, he goes, look, I'm going to destroy you all and send you into captivity in Babylon. And instead he said, okay, I'll send you into Babylon, but I'm going to allow you to be married there. I'm going to allow you to have homes there. I'm going to allow you to have families there and crops and, and, and be a blessing there. And so like everything that God did, even in his discipline, he did with grace. And, and that's something that's really beautiful for us because the, like I pointed out Sunday, the Israelites, they were under a covenant of law, but you and I, we aren't under a covenant of law. We're under a covenant of grace. Now, we know that salvation has always been through grace, has always been through faith, and that when God invites someone to be part of his people, when God called Abraham out from being a pagan to being a follower of his, when God called aside uh, 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 Isaac and, and Jacob, when he would call these guys aside and he would bring them out, when he would appoint Jeremiah to be a prophet or David to be a king, he was doing this out of his grace. And God has extended his grace to you and I through Jesus. We're going to talk about that a lot the next four weeks. But please don't forget that it is in God's very nature to be gracious, that he longs to be gracious to you. Uh, we looked at that text on Sunday as well. God longs to be gracious to you, and he longs to show his grace to his people. Remember what it said in Ezekiel that God doesn't want that any should perish. Now, the context there was specifically Israel, but even in the midst of the rebellion, he's like, man, I don't, I don't want you guys to die. I want you to repent. I want you to, to be saved. I want you to be restored to me. And God, with that heart, has extended grace to you and I through Jesus Christ. Our, our application this past week was we must understand our God as a gracious God. If we think about God as an angry God, uh, Jonathan Edwards had a famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. I, I think um, he was trying to have people understand and know kind of the depth of sin. But what I would say to you is that we are sinners in the hands of a gracious God. Uh, that that, that we, we don't have to be, be altered to be able to come into the presence of God. We don't have to be different than who we are because God in his grace has lavished grace and has lavished mercy upon us so that we can come into his presence. So we've got to understand God as a gracious God. If you're walking around uh, kind of constantly in fear that, that God's angry at you, that he's mad at you, that he's about to smite you, man, I, th I feel like you've misunderstood him and his mercy and his kindness and his grace. And so that brought us to our, our prayer on Sunday. What was our prayer on Sunday? It was God... Uh, we praise you for the tireless way you lash it, lavish your grace on mankind. We praise you for that. Th this, is, this is how I want us to begin 2021. Not, 
not thinking about the grace that God may give us in our jobs or in our finances or in our health uh, in 2021 or the coronavirus maybe being eradicated through vaccines or whatever it is. Not that. I, I, I want us to think about the grace that exists in the very character of God, that he is a gracious God. Like David said, let me fall into the hands of the living God. Let me fall into the hands of God. Because even in, in God's discipline, God was gracious. And so David, knowing that, said, I want to I want to fall into the hands of God. Right, let us be people who come to God the Father uh, out of his, because of his kindness. Uh, we've talked about this before, but I think it bears repeating that w- the goal isn't to scare people into heaven. The goal isn't to tell people, man, you should be so fearful of God's judgment that you, you should repent and get saved. That's, that's not what the scripture teaches. What the scripture teaches is that we should be so in tune with his grace and mercy that that's what brings us to him that we know that we can come to him safely, which is why Romans says that it is the kindness of God that draws us to repentance. And so uh, let that be your thought. Let let your praise today and, and your prayer today not be, God, save us from your wrath, but let your praise and your prayer today be, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, which comes to us even still in this moment. So here are three questions for you to consider to talk about with your friends and your family while you're there at home um, and, and enjoying this beginning of this new year. Question number one, what sort of authority figure have you had that ruled by fear? Have you ever had a boss? Did you have a parent? Did you have an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, somebody who, a pastor maybe, who ruled by fear? Who, whose, whose goal for you was that you would be so afraid of doing wrong or punishment or judgment that you would do right? Who, who in your life uh, did you ever know where you experienced that? Question two, do you find that people close to you, this matters, okay, do you find that people closest to you perceive you as gracious or more heavy-handed? And the reason I say people close to you, look, there, there are always going to be people who think you're a jerk. There's just always going to be somebody out there. So not the internet trolls, not the random guy on Facebook, but do the people closest to you recognize you as a person of grace or more heavy handed? And, and if they find you more heavy handed than gracious, then maybe that's something to consider because we, we aim to be like Christ and we aim to be like God, but, but kind of contemplate that, think through that. And then finally, in your thoughts on God, and this is key, in your thoughts on God, is there a limit to his grace towards mankind? Is there a point at which his grace, he's just done with it? He's not going to be gracious anymore. And if so, what is that limit? If there is a limit, where does that begin? Where does that limit start? And so take a moment to think about those three questions and then come back and hang out with us for the next four weeks as we talk more about the grace of God. we got a lot to cover. We will not be able to exhaust it in one month of sermons, but hopefully it'll give us a good starting point for the year as we face this year um, enveloped by and embracing the grace of Jesus Christ and the grace of God towards us. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.